Dimensional analysis is not often stressed in physics courses, however, it is an incredible technique. Let me show you. We have a little differential equation over here. We have dm by dt is equal to k, where k is just a dimensionless constant. Rho here is the density raised to some power alpha. A is just the area raised to the power of beta. G here is just the gravitational field strength raised to the power of gamma. Now we can actually use dimensional analysis to determine what alpha, beta, and gamma are. Well, let's have a go. First off, the units on the left-hand side, if it's the rate of change of mass, dm by dt, will just be kilograms per second, just sticking to SI units. Now, k is just a dimensional, uh, dimensionless constant, therefore it has no units. I can even just write over here that this one here has no units or no dimensions. And um, so this will be equal to rho, which is just our standard density. Now, the units of density are kilograms, m to the power of minus 3, and that's raised to the power of alpha. Then we have a, which is meters squared. So meters squared, which is going to be raised to the power of beta. G is just gravitational field strength. For instance, the average gravitational field strength on Earth is about 9.81 meters per second per second. So this is going to be meters per second squared raised to a power of gamma. Now, let's expand the right-hand side of this equation. And what we're going to get is kilograms s to the power of minus 1 is going to equal to kg to the power of alpha. Then we're going to get m to the power of minus 3 alpha meters to the power of 2 beta. Then we're going to get meters to the power of gamma. Then we're going to get s to the power of minus 2 gamma. Okay, we're kind of nearly there, so let's just carry on. Kg s to the power of minus 1. Well, this will be equal to kilograms to the power of alpha. We can put all of the meters together, which is going to give us meters to the power of minus 3 alpha plus 2 beta. And then we're going to have plus gamma. And uh, then we finally, we're going to have s to a power of minus 2 gamma. And now we can set the units on the left-hand side to be equal to the units on the right-hand side. Now, what do I mean by that? Over here on the left, we have kilograms to a power of 1. Therefore, alpha will have to be equal to 1. So we can just actually make a system of equations. So alpha will have to be equal to 1 because we have kilograms to a power of minus 1. Now... The meters here will have to be equal to zero because there's no meters on the left-hand side of the equation and everything raised to the power of zero is just one. So we can write that minus three alpha plus two beta plus gamma will have to be equal to zero. And our final equation is that minus one, which is the power of the time unit, the second, will have to be equal to minus two gamma. So we can just say that minus one will be equal to minus two gamma. Now this is a fairly straightforward system of equations. So let's start with, let's start looking at just those two because they're uh, probably the easiest. So just from this one, we can say that uh, one is equal to two gamma, meaning that gamma will just be equal to a half. Alpha is just a one. So I can just focus on the middle equation. I'm going to get that minus three alpha. Uh, so because alpha is just one, this will be just minus three plus two beta. We don't know what beta is plus gamma, which is just a half, will have to be equal to zero. We can figure out our final coefficient beta. So minus three plus a half, well, this will just give us minus 2.5, which is minus uh, five over two. So we're gonna get two beta minus five over two is equal to zero. In other words, beta will be equal to, or two beta will be equal to five over two, meaning that beta will be equal to five over four.
And um, we've actually now figured out all of our coefficients. How incredible is that? I mean, look at that. We know that alpha is equal to one. We know that gamma is equal to a half. And we know that beta is equal to five quarters. So we can literally rewrite this equation with alpha being one, with beta being five quarters, and then gamma being a half. This is actually a question from the 2018 British Physics Olympiad. Uh, they have some fantastic questions over here. And if you're interested in checking them out, have a look at the link in the description. Okay, guys. Well, hopefully you've enjoyed learning this really, really important technique in physics. And if you're curious what the temperature of an average black hole is, have a look over there.